Hey, what's going on? My name is Coach Corey. Welcome to my channel. I am a certified health coach and I just try to break down some keto, low carb, and carnivore nutrition strategies in their simplest terms so you can understand what's going on under the surface when you're eating that style of a nutrition strategy. Now, today's video, we're specifically going to be talking about keto diets and weight management. And so to start this video off, what I always tell my clients and what I'm going to tell you and coach you on right here to start is I highly recommend that you never ever step on a conventional scale again, a scale that just gives you one number, what the body weighs. And so again, before we kind of dive into today's topic, eat fat to lose fat, I want you to understand that there's a better way to track your progress than stepping on a scale. And my favorite way to do that is a body composition reading machine called the InBody machine. Now Garmin makes one too. I'm sure there are plenty of other companies at home that do kind of uh, at home body composition readings, as well as um, kind of bigger machines that you can maybe go to a gym, a supplement store, or a doctor's office and, you know, kind of use their machines as well. And I'll put a link in the description below on where you can find an in-body locator. So if you want that really comprehensive uh, body composition data results sheet, you can get that. Um, I, I recommend all of my clients to go get an in-body and this is how how we track results together. And because we use this in body, we're getting more than just one data point, what the body weighs. We're getting so many more data points that we can make way more informed decisions about where we're going with our nutrition strategy and what steps we're on on the journey and things like that and just making better decisions along the way. So get yourself an in-body machine. You'll get data points that include your visceral fat level, your basal metabolic rate. You're gonna get body fat mass in pounds as well as, of course, percentage of body fat mass. You can discover what, uh, what your composition of water is, so how much water weight you're carrying. Um, you know, body, body um, weight is included in there, of course, as well and uh, you know, skeletal muscle mass in pounds. There's just all kinds of different analytics that we can start to run and these different data points that we can look at to make those more informed decisions. So again, never step on a scale again, especially when it comes to a weight loss journey, you're simply not getting all of the information that you could be getting. So just starting out this video with that talk, because I do think it's really important to start to consider options. And let's be honest, for most of us, stepping on on a scale regularly, whether that's once a day, once a week, whatever is your routine with that scale, the truth is that there are better ways to do it and that scale has likely not served us in the past and probably isn't still serving you now. So don't do it ever again. Uh, let's look for better ways to track progress and an in-body machine might be that better way for you. So when we're talking about weight management, I think we have to acknowledge that there are, I mean, there's a ton of different ways that we can lose weight, but there's certain themes or methods that are a little bit more common. And so I do want to address the calories in, calories out method of weight loss. There's absolute validity to the Kiko or calories in, calories out method of weight loss. If we keep ourselves in enough of a caloric deficit for a long enough time, and we eat less and we move more, yeah, you're going to see some body fat mass reduction. You're going to see that weight loss, but there's no guarantee that all of that weight loss is coming from just body fat mass. And that is in part due to the fact that we're simply not getting enough calories. We're in that caloric deficit. When it comes to that Kiko method, calorie intake and energy expenditure really in any weight loss model, honestly, they're two very important factors. They're very important variables in that equation. But what I've come to know is that those aren't the only two variables and maybe they're not even the most important variables that we need to be looking at. The Kiko method of weight loss pretty much demands that you're in a caloric deficit 
for a consistent period of time. But here's where we run into a little bit of an issue with this method, is that if we stay in too low of a caloric deficit for too long, we're just going to be missing out on getting all of our essential nutrients. We're simply not consuming enough food to cover those bases. I want you to understand one of these metrics, one of these data points that we can get from the in-body machine, or again, maybe your Garmin at home, is your basal metabolic rate. So basal metabolic rate is the least amount of calories that your body needs to just sustain your life. So if you laid in bed all day long and you just let your lungs breathe for you, your heart beat for you, and you know metabolic processes going on in the body constantly, we would still need this baseline number of calories. And what I noticed in working with my clients is that baseline number of calories, our BMR, tends to correlate with skeletal muscle mass. So when we see skeletal muscle mass increase, we'll see the basal metabolic rate increase as well. On average, and I think in this context, these numbers are a little bit arbitrary, but let's just kind of throw some numbers out there for you to have a better understanding here. Most people's basal metabolic rates are going to be somewhere between about 1,100 calories and maybe 1,500 calories. And again, that depends on your uh, body composition and how much muscle you're carrying. But around those numbers, when you start to think about, hey, when was the last time I was in a caloric deficit and what was my caloric intake looking like, how, like excuse me, how many of us are probably under that basal metabolic rate and in general, simply not getting the nutrients that we need? How long could you sustain that caloric deficit? I think this is an inherent problem with the Kiko model is it is simply not sustainable. Not only does it not make sense in any way because we're starving the body of what it actually needs, uh, we just can't stick with it. That's not a lifelong nutrition strategy that's really working for almost any of us, let's be honest. As we look at this other model of weight loss, what I feel like I have to say here, and this is something I used to say to all of my clients all the time, Hormones rule the world, only until I really dove into that low carb, keto, and carnivore space, I didn't understand the full extent of that statement. But I'll say it again, y'all, hormones rule the world. And kind of the opposite model of that calories in, calories out is the endocrine or the hormonal model of weight loss. And so hang with me because I'm going to make this as simple as possible to understand so that you know how to get your body into a mode where it can start to break down your own body fat mass. I would argue that your macronutrient intake or uh, your macronutrient composition is a better indicator of your chances of losing weight especially body fat mass, than being in a caloric deficit. So what does that mean? Let's talk macronutrients and kind of set the stage a little bit for you here. We have three main macronutrients, which we typically all know. We have protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Of that, our protein is largely structural, and in most situations, we are not using protein for energy. However, we use fat and carbohydrate for energy or as a fuel source. The foods that we eat, these macronutrients, have different effects on the hormones in our body and the action that the body then takes because of that hormonal activity. This hormonal effect is exactly a variable that the Kiko model doesn't take into consideration. And so we have to talk about it. We have to consider that here, especially in this low carb keto or carnivore diet uh, context. So the simplest way to remember this is carbohydrates equals sugar equals insulin. And if we were adding on to that, we could even say equals inflammation, but that's a totally different video or blog post, let's be honest. So carbohydrate intake promotes an insulin response, and that insulin response has one job to do, store energy. So think carbohydrates equals insulin equals storage mode. We're going to pull that energy into cells, whether that's muscle cells or other fat cells in the body, and we're going to store those carbs or that sugar 
in those cells. And we can only do that really with the help of insulin or muscle contraction. So when we eat carbohydrates, we're releasing insulin and we're putting the body into what we're going to call here is storage mode. And in this storage mode, the body cannot burn body fat mass or tap into that energy that it's carrying on itself. So if you are on a nutrition strategy where you're consuming carbohydrates three or even more times a day, then we're pretty much keeping the body in that storage mode. The insulin never comes down low enough to allow the body to get out of storage mode. We need to understand how to get into breakdown mode. And that's exactly the key of this video here today is how to get into that breakdown mode. We wanna be able to use our own body fat mass as energy. And you'll hear me say a lot, you know, people get onto keto and the body fat mass just starts to melt off of them. Well, here's why, it's hormones, they rule the world. So the opposite player, to insulin, our storage hormone is glucagon, a breakdown hormone. And once we can reduce, limit, or maybe even just cut out carbohydrate intake, our insulin can finally drop low, which allows glucagon, our breakdown hormone, to start to creep up. And when that ratio swings back this way, insulin low, glucagon high, the body is in breakdown mode. Now we can start to tap into our own body fat mass and use it for energy. Truly ketogenic diets, not just low carb, and we can get more specific here in just a moment in terms of macros and grams, but truly ketogenic styles of eating mimic a fasted state in the body. And that's exactly what that ratio is when the insulin is low and the glucagon is higher. This is exactly what's happening when we fast or completely restrict caloric intake, right? But especially on a carnivore diet and ketogenic styles of eating, we can mimic this state by greatly reducing the carbohydrate intake and pumping up our protein and our fat intake. Because protein and fat do not promote any kind of insulin response, they help keep the body in that breakdown mode. So this is where we start to debunk that keto method of weight loss a little bit more. Because we'll hear about individuals, especially on a carnivore diet, eating 3,000 calories a day with the body fat mass just burning and melting off of them. They're losing weight consistently, but they're never starving. They're never not getting enough nutrients. And that is a huge benefit that you simply can't get from being in a constant caloric deficit. We need these nutrients. It's how we stay healthy. It's how we express that optimal health that most of us are looking for out of our nutrition strategy. So now what I will say here is that even in this hormonal model, calories still matter. Please know that for most of us, yes, there are some individuals who can kind of consume that 3000 calories or whatever that arbitrary number is and still find themselves losing weight. I think it's important to know that at a certain point, if anyone on any nutrition strategy over consumes calories, there's always that chance that you're gonna put on more body fat mass than you're losing. So this is where that Kiko model and the hormonal or endocrine model start to overlap a little bit. The law of thermodynamics is certainly a player in both of these models. And at a certain point, again, calories do matter. Working with a coach or your medical team can start to come into handy where you're getting advice like that that's more tailored to you. So I can't stress this enough. Remember that dietary fat does not make you fat. It does not become fat on your body. We want to eat that fat to lose body fat mass. The fat on our animal products, think a fatty cut of red meat, is going to help keep you satiated for a long time because you're getting all of this fat and protein and all of the essential macronutrients, the vitamins and minerals that come along with it, and suddenly your body has everything that it needs to heal and keep you satiated and keep you calm and regulated. To touch on the macro ratio that would be most appropriate for keto and carnivore diets. So what's actually really cool about the carnivore diet is that this ratio shakes out quite naturally. So when I first started carnivore, I would log my intake every now and then. I was even weighing and measuring the steaks and other animal product foods that we were eating. Just wanted to kind of see where my ratio ended up. How much fat am I getting versus how much protein am I getting? So a classic keto uh 
ratio is 70% of your intake coming from dietary fat and 30% coming from our proteins with the expectation that on keto nutrition strategies, your carbohydrate intake is staying at 10% or less. And again, on carnivore, that's exactly the ratio that it shakes out at. If I'm having eggs and bacon for breakfast and a ribeye for dinner, I'm 70-30. So it's perfect. If you're eating more on the keto style or maybe you're not quite as strict with it, you might want to log your food for a little while and just kind of see where you're at so that you can make smart decisions for yourself. However, again, if you're eating carnivore, eat whole foods, eat when you are hungry, eat until you are satisfied or comfortably stuffed, and it's likely you're going to see some of those weight loss goals start to come through for you. We're going to see that body fat mass start to shed right off. I hope that that was simple enough to start to understand the differences between some conventional weight loss methods and the method of uh, keto or low carbohydrate, specifically being in ketosis, that style of eating. Always let me know what questions you have. Let me know what else you wanna learn from these videos. And I would love to bring it to you in the simplest terms possible. Again, my name is Coach Corey. Thanks so much for being here with me and I'll see you next time.